Yes, guys, good afternoon. Sorry about that. I'd uh, go to the door. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you very much for joining me again, guys, on another show. Yeah, we're going to talk about Liverpool. We're going to talk about Liverpool apparently being title favourites and uh, about the Premier League title race. Uh, big up to everyone in the house. Hope you're all doing well. Guys, don't forget, as soon as you come in, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and hit that a like button i'd appreciate it i just saw my epoxy lie out i don't know what's happening there but yeah big up to everyone thank you again for joining me on this beautiful tuesday afternoon um how are we all doing i hope you're all doing well in here big up to everyone in chat does dare it like as my man ends in the chat as well man like in the chat frankie kingsman hi how you doing skip to psychedelic um t1 dots big up to you man the scottish bear lfc aaron in the house as well tyler jones billy's in the house uh, barry's in the house how you doing man how you doing 
Lord Cromwell in the Cromwell, sorry, in the chat. Hope you're all doing good. Hope you're all doing good. Thank you very much for joining me. So yeah, smash the like, hit the subscribe, hit the share, all that good stuff, guys. On our way to six k now, so I would appreciate all your help. Thank you very much. Um, so Premier League title race, guys. It's just you and me today in the chat, guys. No one coming on. No one on the panel. Just, just me and you guys today. An intimate setting, shall we say? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, loads to talk about. I will. Pr I might be doing another film. Another film. I've been never done a film before. I'm, <laughs> I might be doing another video tonight for Midnight Madness. Um, it depends if you guys want it or not. So I did say I won't talk any more about the manual situation at Liverpool Football Club because it seems a bit pointless now. But obviously, we had some breaking news today about I think Miguel Delaney put it out that uh, Ruben Almarin uh, could be on his way to Barcelona. So the rumours, I don't know. I might do a Midnight Madness about it. If anyone wants to see that show, you know, let me know in the chat. If you want me to do a Midnight Madness show, I'll be uh, I'll be up for doing that. Um, but big up to everyone in the house. Good to see some new people here as well. Or people that have been here not seen for a while. It's nice to see you guys. If you are new in the chat, just let put a thumbs up in the chat if you are new around here recently, and uh, it'd be good to know you guys as well. Uh, Defensive Domino Podcast, big up to you, my friend. Hope you're doing good. But yeah, look, Liverpool are in a, a title race. I don't know how much of us expected this at the beginning of the season with what happened the season before, you know, where we finished fifth in the league and running out of you know, our midfielders on their last legs. Klopp looked like he had enough. Uh, it, 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 it looked a bit dire straits, but look, Liverpool are where we are. We're in April now. What is it? April the 2nd, 2024, and Liverpool are in a title race. And in fact, by a lot of bookmakers and a lot of people like Opta, the Opta supercomputer, and all this nonsense that Sky Sports trying to drivel out, Liverpool are Premier League title favourites from now on. And is that the case? Are uh, Liverpool really Premier League title favourites? We're going to chat about it, guys. We're going to chat about it. Um, big up, Monts, in the chat as well, my man. Hope you're doing good. Big up, you're in the chat as well, my man. Hope you're doing good, man. Hope you're doing good. Yeah, but big up to the community. And don't forget to go and subscribe to people like Monts at Big Six Bands and stuff like that if you've not done that already. And ends, man, in the chat as well. If you're not going to subscribe to Ends Man yet, go and make sure you subscribe to my man Ends as well. Puts out some belting content. He's got other channels as well. Go and check him out. It's a great guy. Make sure you show the love. There you go. Psychedelic putting the links in the chat. Um. So yeah, it, are we? But are we Premier League favourites? Let's 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 talk about it, guys. Because obviously last season. It is what it was, it is what it is, it is what it was, whatever you want to say. Liverpool just weren't at the races for whatever reason. I think we know the reasons mostly. Our midfield was dead. There was no midfielders coming in that season. Um, Klopp admitted to mistakes. FSG admitted to mistakes. Um, everyone cheated on everyone. Yeah, it was just fun. It was just a shit show. <laughs> it was just a complete and utter shite show. It it, it it just was last season. And then this season, you know, we start the season, maybe a little bit of enthusiasm because, you know, we decided to get rid of the old guards. All the old legs in our midfield decided they wanted to leave. Favinho and Henderson saw Saudi money pop up in front of them and decided they wanted to go, you know. And, and we have people like Ox leave, Milner leave, and um, uh, what's his name? I've forgotten his name already. Uh, Naby Keita. We saw Naby Keita leave as well. So we saw the injured and the useless leave our midfield this summer. So we had a midfield rebuild. We had a massive midfield rebuild to do. You know, we got it started well. We got good play. You know, McAllister. I mean, we spoke about him so highly now this season, especially the last few weeks. One of the players of the season, probably the transfer of the year. We got McAllister in. We got Sabozlai in. 
we got Mutaro Endu, my DM, my man, Mutaro Endu in. And then we got Gravenberch in. So we've rebuilt our midfield. We've got more legs in there, more energy in there. And we've got, you know, more football IQ in that midfield, especially with Alexis McAllister, who's got just great football brain in that midfield area. You know, and and then Van Dyke, we didn't know it at the beginning of the season, but Van Dyke was back to his best. We didn't foresee that happening because, you know, Virgil weren't the Virgil of last season, you know, last season he just he wasn't that Virgil. He was all worried. Is Virgil finished? Is Virgil done? Then he's come back this season as the old Virgil. Canate's one on one defending has improved. And then we got people like uh, Gerald Kwanzaa who came through this season as a youth player who's just been fantastic. Joe Gomez has turned back time and gone back to being a good defender again, you know. Stella scoring goals, Jota scoring goals, Darwin improving season on season, Luis Diaz getting better. And the season started well for Liverpool. And, you know, at the start of the season, the first few months of the season, Liverpool fans were all a bit like, we can't win anything without a DM. We can't win anything this season without a defensive midfielder. And what happens, you know, with Tyro Endo is our defensive midfielder. We're top of the league right now. So, a lot of chat at the beginning of the season sort of like been proved wrong a little bit. You know, we've already won one trophy. We're in a hunt for two more. Obviously, disappointingly, went out in the FA Cup to Manchester United in a very weird game that I still don't understand today. I still don't know how we lost that game. Still don't understand it. Absolutely battered them. Somehow lost that game. Very strange. Um, but we've still, got a, we've still got a Premier League to try and win and a Europa League. So it's been a pretty good season so far. and It's been a pretty good season. Uh, and I'm I'm well happy with my season as a Liverpool fan. You know, uh, I, I am excited for the future. And, I mean, and, I, and also, as a Liverpool fan, I'm excited by the present. You know, there's a lot of... Some fans are still a bit on 10 hooks, don't know what's going to happen. And... I can understand that. But as I say, I've already seen my team win a trophy. People will just say, it's always oh, the Carabao Cup. How yeah, can you call the Carabao Cup a trophy? That's just a nonsense. If, you, if people don't want to call the FA Cup and Carabao trophies an important trophy, then take all our wins of the Carabao Cup and FA Cups off our honours list. Let's do that right now. If you don't count the Carabao Cup and FA Cup as legitimate trophies that you can win in a season, take them off our honours list. I don't want to see them. So if they're not on our honours lists, we've still we've got less honours than Man United. Yeah, if people want to play that game, because it really irritates me. I was proper pumped when we won that League Cup. Proper excited by it. It's a trophy. It's what we're here to do, man. We're here to win trophies, and I don't care if it's the League Cup or FA Cup. It puts us as the most honoured club in English football. You know, it puts us as the most honoured club in English football. And I don't know why you'd want to take that away. I, I just I just don't get it. Some people, man, I, I don't understand their, their way of thinking. Uh, big up John Conway has gifted that five memberships. So I appreciate that, pal. Much love to you as always, my man. Much love as always. Guys, also, um, I'll put a link in as well in a minute for my club. Uh, the, the My merch store is open as well that you can go and check out right now as well. Uh, at the moment, we've got a whole line of Mo Salah stuff on the on the uh, on the website right now. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be getting some Virgil and Jurgen Klopp clobber on there as well. But yeah, we'll go and check that out. I'll put a link in the chat if you've not seen it yet. There we go. So I'll put a link in the chat. Go and check out the uh, merch store as well, guys. Go and have a little mooch around there. Have a bit of a window shop. See what you like. So everything in there at the moment is the Mo Salah line. So if you want a bit of Mo Salah merch, go and check it out. Um, yeah, man. Uh, guys, uh, one of the mods, can you put a uh, defensive dynamo podcast is link in the channel for me? That would be great. So any of the mods that are watching right now, if you can put defensive dynamo podcast link in the channel, that would be a beautiful thing to do. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, there's cups on there. There's mugs, cups, hats, T-shirts, snapbacks, 
everything on there, man. Go and have a check, Daz. Go and have a check. Um, but yeah, like I was saying about the trophies and that. Trophies are important. If you want to be the most honoured club in English football, you've got to win trophies. And I think trophies are a good way of showing the success and progression of your football team as well. The fact that they've all got a trophy in the books already and no one else has. You know, considered where we were last season, the massive jump is amazing. And obviously we've got two more to win. And the one we all want, the one we all want is um, the Premier League trophy. We want number 20. We want number 20. That will equal Manchester United on 20 as well. You know, and considering we gave Man United 30 years head start and we could equal them on 20. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd love it, man. I'd love it. That's what we're aiming for. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, no worries, fella. No worry. Uh, Jane, would you want to see one of our future kits? Have an actual badge on it, maybe just a fur kit. Yeah, pre, yeah, yeah, definitely. I know what you're saying, man. Um, yeah, being Irish, I want the Europa League in Dublin as well. Yeah, man, it's, it's just gonna be buzzing, man. It's gonna be beautiful. But look, this Premier League, this Premier League race, man. As I said in the title, Liverpool Premier League favourites, and the reason I put that in the title is because that's how everyone's seeing it right now. You know, with nine games to go, Liverpool are top of the league by two points. And they're three points in front of Manchester City with a better goal difference. But here's the big but in all this. Nine games is still a lot of matches to play. It's a quarter of the season. It's a long, it's still a lot of games to play. And the period of time where we're at now, you have a lot to back, you, you have a lot of back to back games, you know. Sometimes you have two or three games in like eight or nine days, you know. You have a lot of games where you can drop points and lose points and win points. But with nine games to go, I think it's very difficult to still pick an out-and-out winner for the Premier League title. Liverpool have it in their own hands. We can all have to admit that because Liverpool have the advantage. So it's in their hands, you know. Unlike other seasons, everyone's played the same amount of games. You know, other seasons gone by, some people have had like two or one or two games in hand with nine nine or eight games to go. But at this moment in time, I believe everyone's pretty much or uh, played the same amount of games as 29 games each. So th this, this is a little bit of a difference to previous years. But with nine, it, there's just so many games to go. I just don't. I don't see either three teams winning the rest of their remaining games. You, you look at City, I think City probably have the easiest um, fixture list remaining games. I actually think Liverpool have the hardest remaining games. I've been seeing a lot of people saying that Liverpool have the easiest remaining games. I don't think that's actually totally true. I've even said this myself. And I looked at it again today. I've got the fixtures here. We're going to look at the fixtures in a minute. I actually think we got the hardest remaining games, personally. Uh, look, we got difficult away games. Our home games we should win. I think Liverpool, Arsenal and Manchester City will probably win their home games. It all comes down to these away games. And Liverpool got three away games in eight days. Well, you could count it four away games if you count the Atalanta game. That's four difficult games that Liverpool have to, you know, calculate how to get through, circulate how to get through, because them, them four away games, them three away games in the Premier League are extremely, extremely hard, extremely difficult. Away to Fulham's not easy. Away to Everton in the Merseyside derby. Look, we don't win many games in at Everton. You know, there's a lot of draws in Merseyside derbies at Goodison. We always win at Anfield, but the Goodison games are always quite tight and so that's going to be difficult. And then the away game to West Ham, we don't know what West Ham turn up. West Ham are such a weird side. They've got quality players in Paqueta uh, and, you know, uh, Kudus and Jared Bowen and, and players like this that can destroy teams on their day. And we've seen it with West Ham. But also at the same time, West Ham, they can concede three or four in a game like it's nothing. So 
they're quite a strange team. So you don't know what you go get with them. It, it's we've been here before. We've been here before, but we've never been top of the league at this time. Usually Liverpool are chasing Man City. Usually Liverpool got Man City like one or two points behind with 10 games to go. And we keep with them all the way. And City and Liverpool win all their games. It goes to the last game of the season. And Liverpool usually fall one point behind City. We know how the story goes. Apart from that one year when Liverpool just destroyed the Premier League and won the title. Man City, it's a weird one with Manchester City, guys, because their fixture list is really easy. I ain't going to lie. I looked at their fixture list today. I'm going to get it all up in a minute. Their fixture list is pretty easy. And that, I know they're three points behind us and we've got a better goal difference. I don't think City can afford to drop points. But with their fixture list, you can see him winning all of them as well. It's it's difficult. I don't want to get my hopes up too much. Of course, as a Liverpool fan, I will put my hat on the peg and say that Liverpool go win the title because I think not saying that is just bottling it, really. I, I personally feel like with nine games to go and that two-point gap over Arsenal and that three-point gap over City and a better goal difference over City, Liverpool got a chance to just match their results to win the Premier League. So I've got to give my team the benefit of the doubt and say, go, go, I want to win the Premier League. But are they favourites? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. You got this City's fixture list is mad. It's it's a really easy fixture list. Look, let's get it up here now. All right, let me, uh, let me let's get let's get a fixture. List up. Right. So there, there you can see the Premier League table right now. Both all three teams that play twenty nine games. Liverpool got 67 points, Arsenal 65 points, and Man City 64 points. There you can see the goal difference as well. Liverpool 40, uh, Arsenal plus 46, and Manchester City plus 35. Quite a small goal difference of, um, for City. Now, let me take the uh, all this off the thing so we can see it a little bit better. Um, so midweek 30. This is the midweek games. This is the midweek games. So... Obviously, uh, midweek 30, uh, sorry, match week 31. So we already know Man City and Arsenal drew a nil nil. Uh, Liverpool beat Brighton uh, by two goals to one to put us top of the league. This midweek, Arsenal are at home to Luton. You're expecting Arsenal to smash Luton 4 5 nil. Liverpool are at home to Sheffield United. You're expecting Liverpool to sh smash Sheffield United 4 5 nil. And Aston Villa have got the hardest game. Probably out of the three this midweek is at home to Aston Villa. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to play. Let's play along here. Let's play along. Let's see where our points are going to be won and lost. So I want everyone in the chat. Give me a give me the result of Arsenal versus Luton. Just give me the result of Arsenal versus Luton. So in the chat, put Arsenal W for a win, Arsenal D for a draw, or Arsenal L for a loss. So first off, everyone put that. What are we saying? Arsenal Luton. Arsenal Luton. Just put Arsenal W for a win. Arsenal D for a draw. Arsenal L for a loss. So we're all going Arsenal win. Okay. Liverpool, Sheffield United. Liverpool, Sheffield United. Wow. Lakers is going to draw. Arsenal Luton, man. Right, Arsenal, uh, Liverpool, Sheffield United. Give me a, a Liverpool W, a Liverpool D, or a Li Liverpool L for Liverpool, Sheffield United. What are we saying for Liverpool, Sheffield United? Liverpool, W, W for the pool. So that's got, so Arsenal, everyone's got really Arsenal and Liverpool winning. So that would put Liverpool on 70 points. And that would put. Uh, Arsenal, so Liverpool will be on 70 points, Arsenal will be on 68, uh, 68 points. All right, is uh, I think this might be a tough one. Manchester City, uh, Manchester City and Aston Villa, guys. Manchester City and Aston Villa, Manchester City and Aston Villa. Obviously, City get very lucky, and there's no Watkins for the City game for Villa. You know, Villa, you know, Watkins been fine all season, but. 
when it comes to crunch time, when they got to play Man City, of course, Watkins is injured. So what we're saying for Villa, uh, Villa have got a lot of pace down the wide areas. They're good up top. Um, they've got good wide players. McGinn's informing their midfield. What, what are we saying? Uh, what are we saying for that game? This is the interesting one. A lot of you got a draw, a draw for City, score draw, City win, City win, City win, City win, a draw for me. So let's say, so say, say City draw that game. Say City draw that game, yeah? So that'll put City on 65 points and Liverpool on 70. With eight games to go, if that is the case, guys, with eight games to go, Liverpool on 70 points and Manchester City on 65, with Liverpool having a better goal difference, would you, everyone in the chat, then say Man City are at the title race? If Eight games to go, and Man City are only on 65 points with a less goal difference than Liverpool, who are on 70 points. Five-point gap, miles better goal difference. Would everyone say then Manchester City are at the Premier League title race? Some no, some yes, some no's. All right, let's keep going here. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Right. On the weekend, I think this is where it gets tasty. This is where it gets tasty. This is where it gets tasty. On the weekend, Live Arsenal are away to Brighton. Arsenal are away to Brighton. Now, Brighton have lost 10 games this season, but there's teams above them in the Premier League have actually lost more games than Brighton. But what Brighton are very good at doing Brighton are very good at getting draws. They're very good at getting draws. Now, do Arsenal beat Brighton away from home on the weekend? Oh, a lot of people are going for a draw. Okay, a lot of people are going for a draw. Now, Brighton are very good at getting draws. Yes, they've lost 10 Premier League games, but as I said, there's teams above them in the Premier League right now who've actually lost more of them. But uh, Brighton draw a lot of games. A lot of you going for a draw in that game. Right, here's the interesting one. They play before us. So let's say we're sitting here, guys. We've beaten Sheffield United on Thursday. We've, got Matt, we've just watched Brighton get a point at home against Arsenal. Liverpool turn up against Manchester United at the 3.30 kickoff on Sunday afternoon after that game. Do Liverpool take advantage of the drop points from Arsenal and beat Man United on Sunday? What are we saying? Because I think this is our hardest game, man. This is our hardest game, Man United away. So some people are going for a draw in that game. If, see, if Arsenal draw that game, and Man Liverpool, Man United draw, then we let City back into it because City have got Crystal Palace. I I think I got a funny feeling Liverpool gonna beat Man United. I just got this feeling. I don't think Liverpool gonna be as bad as they were in the FA Cup. Yeah, Liverpool destroyed a Manx, yeah. It definitely does, Russell, let's be fair. We just didn't take our chances again in the FA Cup game. We take our chances this time round. I, I believe we better Man United. I, I, I really do. I, I really do think we're better. So, look, I think we can all think that I don't think this Crystal Palace team are good enough to beat Manchester City at home. I don't think any of us feel that. I think we all think that Palace, even being the home team, will still lose to Manchester City. So, 
obviously these are the fixtures here got so i'm just going through a few of them to see about the title race yeah this is where i'm trying to get at so if we look at man city's title fix like their fixtures they're at home to villa a way to palace at home to luton a way to brighton brighton have a big say because Arsenal are away to Brighton and City are away to Brighton. Did Brighton lose both of them games? Did Brighton lose both of them games? That's the thing. Did Brighton lose both games to Arsenal and Manchester City? Let me know in the chat. Did Brighton lose both games to Arsenal and Man City? That means they would have lost to Liverpool, Arsenal and Man City in the last few weeks. Does everyone see that? This is where it gets interesting, this title race. Then there are a way to Nottingham Forest. Now, Nottingham Forest on paper, Nottingham Forest on paper might, Nottingham Forest on paper might be an easy win, right? But Nottingham Forest might be needing to win these games to stay in the Premier League. You know, they might need, be needing to win these games to stay in the Premier League. So on paper, fixture some kinds and look easy. On paper, fixtures can sometimes look pretty easy, but in reality, you've got to put things into it. You know, that 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 Nottingham Forest game, it's a game Forest might need to win. They might need to carry on to win the to keep their Premier League survival. You know, things like that'll be at stake for Forest. So it all depends. Plus, it depends with Champions League for like Arsenal and Manchester City. You know, Manchester City might have beaten Real Madrid. If they've beaten Real Madrid, they've got over the winners of Arsenal by Munich. If Man City go out to Real Madrid, and that's my worry, if Manchester City go out to Real Madrid, I, I see them winning all their fixtures. I see, I see Man City winning all their fixtures. I think their difficult one would be a way to Brighton and a way to Spurs. They're the two difficult games I see for Manchester City in this fixture list because. You just never know with Brighton. The way they play, they can be difficult. You can drop points to Brighton. You can drop point, points to Brighton. Brighton are very good at somehow getting a draw in games. So that is a po possible banana skin. And a way to Spurs, you know, Man City Spurs, you know, Spurs seem to have a hoodoo over, uh, over, over uh, Manchester City. And that game... Is to be yet announced. They don't know where they're going to put it, which is interesting. Uh, and then they got West Ham in the last day of the season where you feel like they just go back to West Ham at home. So that's that. That's Man City fixture this. So I think it's pretty easy. Yeah. Then you look at Arsenal's. So Arsenal got Luton at home, Brighton away, Aston Villa at home. Then they got these games between Wolves and Chelsea, I think. So Wolves is on the weekend, and then Chelsea is the midweek game. Um, then they've got Spurs away, which is going to be a difficult game. Spurs could have a lot of say in this title race. They've got to play Spurs away. I'm going to say one thing for Wolves away. Wolves away is not the easiest game either, guys, is it? Wolves away is not the easiest game in the world. So when I'm looking at that sort of game, I'm thinking Wolves is a possible banana skin. And then you've got Chelsea at home. So on match week 34, they got Wolves on the weekend and they got Chelsea at home midweek. That's two difficult Premier League games. Also, in between that, if they get through the Bayern Munich game, um, they got Bayern Munich in between them games, I believe. I think the second leg is in, you know, the week before that or the week after or the semi final, something like that, if they get through the Bayern Munich game. So European games there to go through as well. But, yeah, Wolves away and Chelsea at home in them two games. Banana skins. Definitely banana skins. Uh, big up the Statman Stubbs in the chat. Hope you're doing well, my friend. It's been a while. Hope you're doing good. Um, and then they got Spurs away. That's three very difficult games. So Arsenal three away games, guys. If we If we look at it here. These three games for Arsenal, Wolves away, Chelsea at home and Spurs away, coming against our three away games, Fulham, Everton and West Ham. Now, if we look at if we look at Man City here, 
Man City haven't got a midweek game. They haven't got a midweek game, but they're away to Brighton. They've got to play Spurs. Now, if the Premier League is being fair, if the Premier League is being fair and they want a fair title race, this City Spurs game has to be the same midweek game as Arsenal Chelsea and Liverpool and Everton. Do we all agree with that? Do we all agree with that? If there's being fairness here, otherwise Liverpool and Arsenal have got more back-to-back fixtures than Man City, and Man City have got more rest because they have to play that game. So if we're talking about Premier League fairness, if Arsenal and Liverpool have got to play a weekend and then a midweek game, and they've got the Brighton game on the weekend, that Spurs game needs to be there as well. That Spurs game needs to be there as well. If we put that Spurs game, guys, if we put that Spurs game with Brighton for City, City have to play away to Brighton and Spurs in one in one on a weekend in the midweek. Liverpool have to play away to Fulham and Everton. And Arsenal will have to play away to Chelsea. Uh, sorry, away to Wolves and at home to Chelsea. So all fairness in the Premier League. For all fairness in the Premier League, that Tottenham game has to be the same week. Has to be the same week. They can't give them a rest. If there's rest, I think Liverpool and Arsenal got every right to moan to the Premier League scheduling about it. Why that game's not been re- rearranged yet, I don't know. I don't know the reasons behind it. There might be a reason behind it. Spurs are not in Europe, so I can't understand why. Spurs and when's the FA Cup? Is it because of the FA Cup? Is it because of the FA Cup? When's the FA Cup? That's another thing we've got to think about. So Man United, Man City played Chelsea in the FA Cup semi final, but it can't be because of the FA Cup because Chelsea are playing midweek. It can't be because of the FA Cup because Chelsea are playing midweek. Chelsea are playing midweek against Arsenal. So why is City playing Tottenham midweek? That's mad to me. Is it because of that? Ah, that's the reason. All right, then that's fair. Then if they got to play, if Tottenham got to play Chelsea again because of the League Cup final, then they got to rearrange that game so it can't be the same week, yeah? Right. But why can't it be the same week? Because Chelsea are playing midweek still. Tottenham have to play Chelsea again. But if Chelsea are playing midweek, why can't they still do the the uh, Chelsea game midweek there? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. Like, they've got not in front. Where would they play it? Obviously, they've got to play it sometimes. you got to play them sometime. So this Spurs game's got to be played somewhere. So is it the week after, the Forest away game and then the Spurs away game? Because you've got Wolves at home. Unless they do it with the Wolves home game and then they rearrange the Spurs game between Wolves and Fulham, maybe. Maybe that. It's got to be rearranged, though. It's got to be rearranged. It's definitely got to be rearranged. <coughs> but these are the games, guys. This 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 match week 34, if I'm looking at match week 34, especially for Liverpool and Arsenal, Arsenal away to Wolves, at home to Chelsea, and then away to Spurs. Liverpool with them three away games, yeah? City, look at their fixtures. So what we're biding by this is that City have the easiest fixtures by a country mile. City have the easiest fixtures by a country mile. You know, they have the easiest fixtures. So for me, looking at these fixtures, Manchester City should still be Premier League favourites. At this moment in time, they've got a, a less less fixture congestion in the Premier League right now. Um, Liverpool got three away games in seven days. 
and uh, Arsenal have got them that difficult three games in seven days. Wolves away, Chelsea at home and Spurs away. So if you look at that section of the fixtures there, you've got to make Man City Premier League favourites. You do. The fixtures tell you that. The fixtures easily tell you that. Look at the congestion for City, for Liverpool and Arsenal. Liverpool have got to do three away games and then play Spurs at home. Arsenal have got Wolves away, Chelsea at home, Spurs away. And in uh, and at the same time, um, uh, Man City got Brighton, Nottingham Forest, and Wolves. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> Man City have got even with Man City being three points behind right now, you still got to make them Premier League favourites, especially if they're for me if they go out against Real Madrid. I've just got this feeling that Man City are going to lose to Real Madrid over two legs. If Man City go out to Real Madrid and all they got to concentrate on then is Brighton, Forest and Wolves and the FA Cup semi-final with Chelsea, uh, it, you've got to make City strong favourites for me. You know, that's, that's, that's the easiest route. I think they have the easiest fixture list. I actually think Arsenal have the hardest fixture list, to be fair. I'm looking at it right now. I thought we did, but Arsenal's fixtures are mad. Uh, Arsenal's fixtures are mad, guys. I ain't lying to you. Brighton away, Villa at home, Wolves away, Chelsea at home, Spurs away. Uh, in between all that, they've got to play Bayern Munich. So in between the Brighton, Villa, Wolves, Chelsea and Spurs game, they've got to play two legs against Bayern Munich. That is a difficult fixture list for Arsenal. That's a difficult fixture list. That ain't easy to get through. So if I'm looking at it from this point on, and I'm looking at City fixtures, especially with the like they got the Real Madrid game. I just feel like City's Premier League fixtures are a more handsome fixture than Liverpool and Arsenal's. So you've got to make City Premier League title favourites for me and not Liverpool right now. Liverpool are in the driving seat. Liverpool have it in their own hands because they're a, they're a clear at the top of the table. But Liverpool and Arsenal have got some difficult fixtures, man. You know, they got some difficult fixtures there. Um, if Arsenal City meeting the semis in the first leg for City is in between the Forest and Wolves game and Arsenal's is Spurs and Bournemouth and United. That makes it even harder for Arsenal, Edward. If that's the case and they both get through and have a semi-final, that's even more difficult for Arsenal. So City have got to contend with Forest and Wolves. And Arsenal's is Spurs and Bournemouth and United. Yeah, then that's even harder for Arsenal. So you still make Man City Premier League favourites. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think if you look at the fixtures, big up Adam in the chat, guys. So, uh, one of the mods, please put um, Adam's uh, uh, channel in the chat. Um, Spurs City, Champions League, Bournemouth City, Champions League, United. Yeah, yes. Uh, Jamie, Man City versus Brighton on Wednesday, the 25th of April. They played Chelsea in the weekend before when we play Fulham. And they play Chelsea the weekend before we play Fulham. So they, they're playing Chelsea the weekend before we play Fulham. So, yeah, it's just... Yeah, Arsenal got the hardest fixtures, I think, there, guys. I, 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 I'm looking at it now. I, I, I think Arsenal have the hardest fixtures. What do you think in the chat, guys? Who has the hardest fixtures? Arsenal, Liverpool or Manchester City? Let's get let's, let's, let's get it up in the chat right now. Who has the hardest fixtures? I'm looking at it, and I'm going to say Arsenal do. Because they've got to play Champions League as well. You know, Liverpool have got to play At Atalanta. And I'm not being funny. Atalanta is an easier fixture than Bayern Munich or Real Madrid in the Champions League. Let's not pretend it isn't. Let's not do that. You know, I'd rather play At Atalanta in the middle of them fixtures than Bayern Munich and Real Madrid. So... 
and Arsenal, them fixtures there. Away to Brighton is not easy, guys, on the weekend. Home to Villa. Villa are a decent side. Very good side going for Champions League. Villa have got to play bloody, is it City and Arsenal almost back-to-back. So, yeah, Villa need to, they need points to if they want to play Champions League football. That ain't an easy game. I know Villa's away record ain't been the best, but Villa need Champions League football. They are where they are right now, and they want to finish in top four. Uh, and then they're away to Wolves at the banana skin. At home to Chelsea. Chelsea have been weird against the big sides. Look how many. It's got six goals against City this season. Um, and in a way to Spurs, you know, their record at Spurs is not the best. So, yeah. I would say, I, I, I would say the way the fixtures are for Arsenal, the way they're condensed in that little period between week 30, match week 33 and match week 35. We're trying to get through Bayern Munich at the same time for Arsenal to get past Bayern Munich and to get past them fixtures for Arsenal. Highlighted fixtures for Arsenal in between the Bayern Munich games. Yeah, that's that's a hard run, man. That's that's a hard that's a hard that's a really hard run. That's a really, really difficult run. The only way it the for me, Arsenal's fixture list gets even harder if Man City beat Real Madrid and, and Arsenal beat Bayern Munich. And then Arsenal got to play two legs against Man City plus them fixtures. Then I think it's almost impossible for Arsenal to win the Premier League. They've also got to go away to Man United as well. It, it's yeah, I, I I would say right now, City have got the easiest fixtures and Liverpool got uh, second and then Arsenal got the hardest. There's no doubt about it. Points are going to be dropped everywhere, guys. So uh, on the fixture side of things, I don't know about you guys in a chat. Looking at the fixtures, I'd make Man City the title favourites, Liverpool second favourites and Arsenal third favourites. Do we all agree with that? He got the FA Cup to play as well, yeah, against Chelsea. So, do we agree with that? City favourites, City favourites, Sheffield United, uh, Liverpool second favourites, Arsenal third favourites. Pinto's got Arsenal still favourites, even with them fixtures, my man. Even with them fixtures, them fixtures are mad. Uh, big up slacking armchair sports. Liverpool win their all their remaining games. Bigger. That's what I want to hear. My man. Big up to you. That's what I want to hear. You got to put us third favourites. Uh, Connor, let me know why you say third favourites. Let me know. Yeah, our three point cushion over City as well is something we're going to have to look at. Because we have got a better goal difference. And we play Sheffield United on Thursday. Now, I know Man City have only beaten Sheffield United 2-0 and 2-1 this season. But if we're being serious here, Liverpool want to get their goal, their, you know, their goal tallies up a little bit. Uh, our goal difference, we need to put four or five past Sheffield United on Thursday. We just do. We have to. If we can put five past Sheffield United... It puts us on the same, pretty much same goal difference as Arsenal. And it stretches us as away from Manchester City. So that goal difference almost becomes an extra point. And then you're looking like you're really four points in front of her, in front of Manchester City. So Liverpool have got the comfort of having that points gap. There's no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. That's why I make a second favourite. Um, the Red Machine says Man City won't beat both Villa and Palace. Interesting. Home and away. Yeah, the Palace are a bit of a... Yeah, Palace are... They're a weird one, aren't they? They've beaten City before, haven't they, in the league at times, and no one's expecting it. The Villa game, though, it's a Villa game between... No, Villa have got to play all three, obviously. But, yeah, Villa might have a say. 
Brighton away for both teams. You know, we've played Brighton now. But City and Arsenal both got to go away to Brighton. Both of them are playing Villa at home. Liverpool playing Villa away. But Man Manchester City and Arsenal have got to play Spurs away from home. We're playing them at home. I feel much more comfortable playing Spurs at home. But the away games for City and Arsenal, yeah. Uh, City ain't favourites. They've been poor this year, says James. Liverpool will beat Sheffield United 2-0. We waste too many chances. We only beat them 2-0 as well. Yeah, exactly. That was away from home, though. But at home, I expect us to be a lot better. We sure do love the underdog story. I don't count us as underdogs. I, I just think City are favourites with the fixtures, Jamrock. That's all. Uh, my worry is that Jamie is us being uh, too preoccupied with goal difference Thursday. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I think if Liverpool do their job against not uh, against Sheffield United, what we should do against Sheffield United is make sure we got the win. You know, two or three. Get, you know, if we're two nil up after sixty minutes, I think Liverpool can. You know, make sure we got the win, and then see if you want to add extra goals. I understand what you mean there. Uh, the emotion Sunday could get the best of Liverpool. I don't want Diaz missing sitters with Nunes again. Fair enough. Fair enough. I get you, man. Uh, Emperor Endo has decreed <laughs> that the title is going to Mercy's side, you know. Yeah, man. Uh, can we put seven or eight past Sheffield and three and four against United Gold? This has been our favourite two. You know what? It is a mad one, guys. It is a mad one. It wouldn't surprise me that we beat Man United by more goals than we beat Sheffield United. Well, how weird would that be? Uh, if we beat Man United 3-0, right, at Old Trafford, but only beat Sheffield United 2-0 at Anfield. That, would that actually shock anyone? It wouldn't actually shock me. It wouldn't actually shock me. Uh, I think we've drawn too many games and it's come back to bite us. Maybe, maybe. Uh, that point we robbed off at Spurs is looking more and more crucial. Uh, wouldn't that be a shame? Look, if, if could you imagine if this comes down to goal difference on the Premier League and you go back to that Tottenham game? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, man. City put drop points at Spurs usually. Yeah, I, I think all teams are going to drop. I don't think anyone's going to win all their games. Uh, Palace are a bogey team for City, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's how they so always win. Yeah, it's a weird one, ain't it? Oh, I agree, Remy. Liverpool have to win all their games. They do. Uh, not tough. All bookies have us as favourites. Uh, that's why I'm saying we have the second easiest jam rock, not the hardest. That's why I said, uh, if I look at City's fixtures, I think they have the easiest fixtures. I think Liverpool have the second easiest fixtures and Arsenal have the hardest. Big up, my man. Big up. Uh, what do you think about the match against United after what happened? Um, so I, I, I think Liverpool literally just have to go all out, man. They have to beat Man United. I, I don't think we can have... If we draw that game to United, I don't, we can't sit here and bitch and moan. We have to beat them, man. This United team are terrible. I watched Brentford play United on the weekend and had 30 bloody shots against them. If Ivan Tony played, just, you know, took a few of these chances, United are getting battered. I've watched Bournemouth beat them 4-0. Liverpool got to turn up there and just be professional and not play the occasion. My only problem with Liverpool at times is when they go away to Old Trafford, I don't know what it is, but a lot of the times they play the occasion instead of the team they're playing. The only time they've not played the occasion and we actually play the team, look what happens. Put five past them, seven past them. <coughs> Although that was at Anfield, the seven. Liverpool just got to play this Man United team for who they are. Not a very good side. and Not play the occasion. Don't get swept up in the occasion. Play Manchester United, who are not very good. Var Varane is not going to play. It's quite sad news hearing about Varane today in the news, talking about, you know, 
the head injuries and stuff like that, and he doesn't want his son headering a ball and things like that. So Varane, it's sad news how Varane's thinking at the moment, but he's out injured. They're going to probably play Maguire and that at the back. I, I believe is Bruno Fernandez out injured or something as well. I read today that they're not a very good team. As long as we don't play the occasion, we should beat them. We, we just should. <laughs> I can see that happening for him. Yeah, exactly. Beat Sheffield United 2 0, beat uh, May United 3 0. We all sit here and go, how's that work? How's that work? Look how many shots Man United take on a regular basis as well. You know, they take regular, they take a pummeling. Haven't they taken more shots than anyone else in the Premier League? It's mad. You can get at them so easy. 4 0 versus Sheffield and 2 1 versus Man United. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. I expect us to win all our games. Like if we do that and win the Premier League, I'm proper happy, man. <coughs> uh, all the bookies are Liverpool's favourites. That's why I got it on the title, like Liverpool title favourites. All of them, and we're trying to downplay our chances. No, I just, I just feel like. I've already said, I have said it. I did say this yesterday on uh, on Monty's channel that if if you got told Liverpool are going to be top of the league with two games to go, uh, with nine games to go, and you're going to be top of the league by two points at, at, at top with a good goal difference, and they were your fixtures that you had left, you'd take your, you'd bite your hand off for them fixtures. So I do get you. I do get you. I just... I think it's because we've all been here, ain't it? We've all got PTSD. We've all been here before when we've looked at the Bulls' fixtures. Go, yeah, we should should win all them games, then we draw a game. You know, like Everton away, Everton away on paper should be a win, yeah. But we all know what Everton are going to do. They're going to play ten behind the ball. They're not going to move defensively. Uh, they're going to be really hard to break down, low, low block, and it could be a struggle and it could be frustrating. The West Ham away game, for some reason, I just see us winning because West Ham are a weird side. I see us beating Spurs at home. I see us beating Villa away, and I see us beating Wolves at home. My two games where I think Liverpool could drop points is Fulham away, Everton away, and Man United. Three games, sorry. Man United away, Everton away, and Fulham away. They're the three games I feel Liverpool drop points. Everywhere else, I think we win. That's my only worry. That's the only concern I've got. Otherwise, I think... There's no reason why we can't win the Premier League. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Anthony Taylor's the referee. That's mad, ain't it? It's absolutely mad. That shouldn't be the case. Yeah. Martinez is back. So Martinez and Maguire at the back. Uh, the challenge you want. I, 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 think it, I think it might be Everton away. Just for the sake of what Everton are going to try and do. Everything go just sit back like you wouldn't believe and make it hard. You know, Evertonians are not going to want Liverpool winning the Premier League. That's just a fact. They will try everything their power. Goodson Park will be loud. It'll be noisy. It could be quite intimidating. They're going to try everything their power, man, to stop it. I think that will be the most frustrating game. Yeah. I think the Villa away game might not be that difficult, man. It all depends on Villa's fixtures and how they do. But Villa could be Villa could have top four sewn up by the time we play them, guys. Like Villa could have top four sewn up by the time we play them. So if that's the case, it might not be as difficult as we once foreseed. Um I will say one thing. If you look at Arsenal's fixtures, yeah. You know, it could come to a shootout between Liverpool and City by the time we get to that Villa game. So, we have to go for it. But, yeah, it all depends on the Villa. It all depends on, you know, because we got Villa, what is it, second last game in the season, yeah? Away from home. It all depends how Villa have done. If Villa have got top four or top five set up, you know, Villa probably could be in a Conference League final. They got Lille in the quarterfinals. You'd probably fancy Villa beating Lille in the quarterfinals of the Conference Cup, they could be into a European final. And 
have that at the back of their mind because they'd want to win a European trophy. There's no doubt about it. And if they got top five sewn up, because top five is probably going to get you a Champions League place because I've seen Villa going far in a conference. I've seen Liverpool get into the Europa League final. And one of us or Man City are probably going to get to the semi-final Champions League, which means England are going to get five five picks in the Champions League next season. So Villa have got that top five sewn up pretty much because Man United are the only team that can catch them. And they're trash. And they're going to probably drop more points. As I would say Man United are going to drop more points than Aston Villa from now to the end of the season, yeah? So if that's the case, Villa could have Champions League sewn up by the time we play them, guys. So it might not actually be as difficult as some think, you know. I agree with that as well. We've got the easier European game, no doubt about it, no doubt about it. Anyone who says any other, and anyone who says anything other is lying. And I don't want to hear this Thursday Sunday thing. The Thursday Sunday thing is a myth. It's a complete myth. <clears throat> So, yeah, I, I, I would say, yeah, I, I, we got the easier European game. There's no doubt about, doubt about it. Uh, don't forget Spurs. No, but Spurs, we've got Spurs at home. I just feel like we can be, uh, we'll win all our home games. I, I just feel like we, we well, Liverpool only drop points away from home. That's what I'm going to say. I think Liverpool win all their home games. They should as well, even the Spurs game. And Spurs could have Europeans sewn up by then. You know, you, they could have Champions League. Spurs and Aston Villa, by the time we play them, guys, could pretty much have Champions League sewn up. Because Man United are the only real team that could catch them in that top five race, to be fair. And I, I, I don't think Man United are going to win more points from now to the end of the season than Villa or Spurs. So, yeah. No, Man Liverpool have not beaten Man United this season in the FA Cup or Premier League, which is mad. Which is mad. Yeah, maybe Justin, but Liverpool have got something to play for as well, the Premier League, don't they? So the work in our favour, you know. But look, it's gotta be an exciting end to the season, working out the fixtures, looking at the fixtures. Seeing who we can beat, who we can't. It's it's intriguing because, as I say, if football was played on paper, you would literally say City probably almost win every single game if we're playing it on paper. The only two gut difficult games on paper for, for City is the uh, Brighton and Spurs game. With Liverpool, they pretty much should win every game on paper. The only difficult games are probably... Man United away and Everton away and Villa away, probably. But apart from that, you should win every game. And then with Arsenal, you know, they got they got the hardest fixture list. So I think all three teams are going to drop points. I think we could drop points. I think teams could drop points where we're not even mentioning. We're thinking like oh, Villa could get a point against City on the weekend, on, on, on Thursday or Wednesday or whenever they play this midweek. Villa could literally get a point out. That won't shock me. But we're thinking they'd probably win, you know. There's been weird fixtures where people drop points for absolutely no reason. It's going to be an exciting end to the Premier League. Um, I, I personally think... I, I personally think you make City favourites, Liverpool second favourites, Arsenal third favourites. But I'm going to stick my head on the line. No, not a lot of Liverpool fans are doing that, but I'm going to stick my head out there and say Liverpool go win the Premier League. I'm going to be, I'm going to put my big boy pants on and sit here right now on my YouTube channel where I can get clipped up and people can take the piss and all that. But I'm going to say it with chest. I think Liverpool win the Premier League. We've come too far. We've come too far now just to throw it away. Yeah, so City and Villa is tomorrow. So tomorrow, by the time Liverpool could play, Liverpool could be second in the Premier League. And joint on points with Man City. But then we got Sheffield United, who we should batter. So, yeah, let's just do it, man. We're, I'm a Liverpool fan. We're Liverpool fans. We should we should back our team. And we're two points clear of Arsenal, three points clear of Man City. Got a better goal difference over Man City. Got Sheffield United to play on Thursday. And then Man United away and then Crystal Palace at home. Come on. Then three Premier League games we should all win. 
and we should uh, be sitting here really confident. Let's just go for it, guys. What have we got to lose? <clears throat> no one expected Liverpool to be here. We are here. Let's just go for it. Let's try our best, man. As I said, these fixtures are not the worst. You know, they're not the worst. I think I've still got the hardest run. City so got the easiest, but Liverpool have definitely not got a hard run. So, yeah, let's, let's do this, man. I, I, I'm just going to pull it out. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, Liverpool finished second in this Premier League. So be it. I'm wrong. But I'm not going to be here sitting pretending that, oh, I didn't say we'll go. Yeah, I'm going to say Liverpool go win the Premier League. We've got nine games to go. We've got a gap at the top. Why can't I say that? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't care. Really don't give a shit. But, yeah. I, I, I think Liverpool can do it, man. I think Liverpool can do it. And, you know, what better way to send Klopp off than win that Premier League trophy? <clears throat> I, I've got to say, though, Liverpool had never usually been top of the league with nine games to go in a Premier League title race. We're usually behind City by a point or two. And we're playing catch-up most of the time with nine, eight games to go because we, we gave it away earlier in the season. You know, there's been times in these Premier League title races when Liverpool had a seven or eight-point, you know, gap between ourselves and Man City. But by the time we come to March or April time, Liverpool were always sitting in second place. But for, for the first time in a long time, since we probably last won the Premier League, Liverpool are sitting at the top of the league with a points gap in April. So it's a little bit different. And... It's a free horse title race. Usually it's just City or Liverpool or City and Arsenal like it was last season and no one else has got any say in it. But this time it's a three-way title fight and that is the difference this year. This year. You can't, you know, if we drop points, then City and Arsenal got points to catch. It's totally different this year. So, yeah, that, what, that, let's go for it, man. Let's, let's see what happens. I'm going to enjoy the ride. I don't know about you guys. We'll go enjoy it. We'll go have fun with it. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait for it, man. I, I literally can't wait for it. But, guys, we've got the match on Thursday. I, I might be back for Midnight Madness tonight, guys. I'll see how it goes, just to bring you this Ruben Almer in news. We'll keep an eye on it as uh, as it goes on today. But, yeah, a lot of people are worried now that Barcelona are going to snatch him under the grasp of Liverpool Football Club. We'll see how it goes. I might be back at midnight. If not, what we're looking at is Wednesday, tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow, definitely, in a way, with a match preview for the uh, game against Sheffield United. We're looking at back at players back for fitness, who's available, players that are not too far away. Be chatting all that, guys. So make sure you're joining me. Make sure you're hitting the likes, guys. Let's try and get to 100 likes. I have no idea how many likes we're on. I haven't looked at all. But yeah, hit them likes. We're at 96 likes right now. Let's I need four more likes before we leave, guys. Four more likes. Go on. Three more likes. We're at 97 now. Someone hit 98. I need two more likes. Two more. Two more likes. Come on, guys. Two more likes. Two more likes, guys. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, we're on 100. There you go. Big up with one in the chat. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You smashed it up. Much love. Thank you very much, guys. We're on the 100. I can leave now in peace. Guys, thank you very much. If I do see you tonight, I hope I do. If not, I will definitely see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Much love to all of you. Bye-bye for now.